everybody. How are you doing? Uh, Dee Dee here with a new iCAD um, index card today. I have started with a 3 inch by 5 inch index card and it's been covered in some Liquitex gesso. I decided I wanted to uh, play with this vintage, some of this vintage paper uh, out of a, like a little memo book. And, but it wasn't wide enough to cover my the top of my my card like I was hoping so I put the, the two pieces of vintage paper together and then I tore them at the area where they would meet and because I tore them together backwards then when I lay them down it looks like it's it looks more like it's one cohesive piece so a little tip there um, <clears throat> excuse me, I am, I glued it down with YooHoo, and then as I'm sort of like playing around with it, I just end up realizing that the paper, it's so old, it's just like kind of flimsy anyway, so a couple pieces kind of chip off, and in the end I just end up going with what I have, but it still does look a bit more cohesive from tearing it. Uh, I am using some new stamps of that I have designed for Viva Las Vegas stamps. I absolutely love having the opportunity to design these types of rubber stamps. These, uh, this new set is all super like art journaly, mixed media, background, mark making type stuff that I've been working on. This one that I'm using is a Punchinella slash sequin waste border. And it, uh, right now these stamps are just available on a plate, but just shortly in like a week or maybe even like a, a six days or something like that, they will be available individually mounted. So keep your eye out. For now I'll link to the plate and then I will try really hard to come back later and link to the individual stamps. Um, so I stamped that down with archival ink. It's the black soot color that I put in a DIY distress pad, so the pad was blank. And then now I'm using, um, I, I wanted to show you, like I kind of frequently go back to my Stabilo, but I wanted to show you that there were other things that could work similarly to a Stabilo. Now remember that I glued my paper down with a YooHoo glue stick, so I didn't collage it. There's no like barrier between the paper the vintage paper and my paint. And in my little cup is a mixture of golden fluid acrylic and airbrush medium. And not because I thought that I should paint with that, but because that's what I fill my fine liners with. So that's just what's there and what was really close by and I couldn't find my big, um, my big bottle of fluid acrylic and carbon black. So, and I knew that this had carbon black in it and I really wanted that sort of dark grungy dirty sort of blackness happening. This card's a little doom and gloom, I guess you could say. Um, right there, while the card was wet, because I had flooded it with water to while I was playing with the acrylic, while that happened, I turned my fine liner over and I squeezed it a little bit and shook it on the card. And then where the drops hit dry card, they kind of just stayed. But that bottom right hand corner, there was a little puddle of water there. And it just like it hit the water and then started to spread out and it's such a cool technique and it's not really something that you can mimic because it's a wet on wet technique so that means that the paper was wet and then I spritzed some wet paint and it started to like kind of like fizz out it's very cool give it a try if you've never done it um, and now I'm just like drawing between the layers that the other thing that I I wanted to share today. So when I use a Stabilo, I always have to remember that the Stabilo is still water soluble even after it's dried. But if I use acrylic paint instead, then now it's dry and it's permanent and I don't have to worry about it being reactivated when I go back over it with wet stuff. This is another one of those stamps from the new set that I designed. It's a really long row of uh, vintage numbers. I say vintage because it's kind of like typeset like it may have come out of a different ledger or something like that. There you can kind of get a good idea. And I just, I didn't put these on an acrylic block because I was just going for for um, some distressed stuff, I guess you could say. Um, just some patterns and kind of text and things happening in the background, but they're numbers, so it's very cool. And uh, it lent itself really well to the vintage text that I actually used, the paper at the top from the memo pad. Now, I uh, just cut out some words from a page, and they say, 
um, shallow and untrustworthy. So this page gets a little doom and gloom, but I think it's kind of fun and uh, it's different too. Like not everything has to be bright and cheerful because not everything is. This is one more, I did just use one more stamp from that set, uh, kind of some like tick marks or cross, oh, excuse me, cross marks. It's sort of a background, just some mark baking stuff. And then this is kind of the shining, shining star here from this whole plate. So I sort of um, have turned this into a very normal thing that I do or a very frequent thing that I do when I make circles. Then I like to write all the way around the edge of the circle. And uh, it's really, really fun. Now, because I have gotten a lot of texture going on this page with the different layers of paint and things like that. My stamps are not coming out perfect and it has nothing to do with the stamps. It's just that I'm stamping on texture. So to combat that, I have got out my black Posca paint pen and, or paint marker, I should say, and it has filled with acrylic paint and I am just kind of darkening up that new stamp that I just stamped. And this stamp is so lovely and I've been meaning to put it on a board for quite a while. So now I sort of have a star one and there's a heart one and now there's a circle one. Now the star one is a little bit different because it has some collage stuff happening on it but still I, I love these stamps. They are such go-to's for me and I still love hand making them um, when I'm working on certain projects but sometimes especially like with the iCADs just kind of moving forward and doing some art and getting it done, then uh, it's nice to just stamp it. As, and especially if you're going to be making cards, like a set of cards, or you want, you know, a repetitive idea, then you you can now have that in stamp form. And people ask me all the time, what does the handwriting say? It says whatever you want it to say. I very specifically make it um, not legible, uh, but you can tell that it is somebody's handwriting. So keep that in mind. Oh, and I, I just glued down the shallow and untrustworthy. I used Yoohoo to glue those down. And one of the things I like about Yoohoo is it doesn't soak through my paper. Sometimes if I collage, then I will, um, the paper will get soaked and then some of the words from the back side of the paper will show through. And I hate that. I hate that so much. I don't know why, but it irritates me. Maybe because I'm always going for a very specific, uh, <laughs> word or a specific saying or you know I'm aiming towards a poem or something like that but so I did use Yoohoo and then I'm using my black pen to just sort of add some additional stuff I did some dots and I outlined shallow and untrustworthy and then I did a a smaller section of handwriting just like a shorter one around that edge of the circle to kind of darken that up a little bit and and add a little more um, intensity. So that's it. Thanks for joining me. Glad to be back with some more iCADs. Um, check out these close-up shots here, you know, all the pretty stuff happening. And feel free to subscribe to my channel where I'll always be giving you mixed media tips, tricks, and techniques. And um, let me know in the comments if you want to see something specific. There is a supply list right below here. Um, and that's it. I think check out my other videos. Always glad to have you here and I'll see you next time.